We are ambassadors for Christ, who reconciles and makes whole. We are the salt of the earth. We are the light of the world to equip the saints for the work of ministry and ministers of word and mission. Uganda is known as a home for refugees, the second biggest country to host refugees. Uganda is also known for deploying peace missions in several parts of Africa. Ugandan troops are in Somalia, the been in uh, South Sudan, the been in Liberia, in Congo, in Central African Republic. The UPDF is doing an incredible job. Besides Uganda being deploying its men and women in uniform in several countries, there is also an army of preachers that Uganda is sending to several parts of the world. My guest today is Dr. Commander Robert, the lead pastor of Amen Commission Church, and he is going to take us to Uganda's mandate and what they're doing and sending missionaries around the world. Happy New Year 2024, our viewers. Doctor, welcome Thank you to much. HICJ News Agency Senior Citizens Talk. Man, I'm so excited to invite me. Um, and I believe that we are beginning a new year uh, in a very powerful way. How was the year to you? Uh, it was good. It was good. It was good. There are always ups and downs, but we are fine. Wow. <laughs> and we thank the Lord for the new year uh, because we have a lot of programs, a lot of plans, and we believe that the Lord will fulfill everything. I'm seeing an auditorium of uh, uh, a building of 3,000 seaters up and then in the basement 1,000 seaters. What is the building for? This is a, it's a church complex uh, that accommodates uh, missionaries from different countries, from different countries. And we are always in the business of training missionaries. So missionaries come from different countries and we, we train them here. How many are those countries? So far we are in 32 countries in Africa. So far we are in 32 countries in Africa. And we have done missions in those countries. And uh, we have coordinators in all these countries. Mission is going on in all these countries. Yeah. How, how is it done? Tell us about those missions. Um, in 2004, we began what we call Finding the Lost 2 by 2 Mission. Mm -hmm. It's a missionary program that focuses on winning souls. And so we train believers how to win souls. Uh, we have seen that it's more effective to reach people one-on-one -on -one and preach to them Christ. They ask questions. When they get saved, they really get saved. And it has been very, very effective. We began in 2004. In three years, we had covered the whole of Uganda, working with over 20,000 churches. We don't plant churches as finding the lost two-by-two -two mission but we work with churches. So if a church wants to expand and plant chant branches, we work with them. People get saved, we leave you with your church, and then we continue to other people. Then um, after three years, it was realized that over 250,000 people had gotten saved and come to church. We have live testimonies here in Uganda. And then in 2008, the Lord spoke to me take this program of finding the lost two by two mission to other countries. He showed me a country that was in the form of the heart of a man. And I discovered that this country was Burundi. So Burundi was our first country oh. <laughs> for missions. I took there 40, 40 missionaries and we were there for over six months. We worked in all the seven provinces of Burundi and we saw thousands of people getting saved. Um, and then from there, we went to Kenya, 
from Kenya when we came to Rwanda, as the Lord was showing us up to, to date when we are in 32 countries in Africa. And we have had thousands, actually millions of people getting saved. And we have trained hundreds of thousands of believers that are now doing this work of finding the lost two by two mission. And even here in Uganda, many churches have adopted this system of two by two, sending two by two, as Jesus did it in the book of Luke. He sent two by two to his souls. And so we do the same thing. I have seen white, uh, main two white people. I don't know which region is that. Uh, they come uh, also moving around, talking to people, preaching. Uh, is that the kind of style? Um, the first thing is the message. Mm. The message that you carry. Oh, the message is important. The message is very, very important. Mm. You know, everybody can go run around preaching the gospel, but what kind of gospel are you preaching? Where are you taking the people from and where are you taking them? So the Lord has revealed to us a number of uh, secrets. I could call them mysteries of where people are and where we are taking them. What was the fall and what God is doing right now with the people that had fallen? Where is he picking them from and where is he taking them? So the message is very, very important. So it's the message that we train the people that has made a very, very great impact in the people. The message, people get to understand what is salvation? Why do they have to get saved? Our message, uh, our message crosses all boundaries. It has nothing with the, uh, I mean, it crosses all boundaries, all religious backgrounds. It crosses there. Because every person needs to know why God created man. Everyone would love to know that. And, and, and that's the message we carry on. Uh, why God created you? Then we come from the book of Genesis to Revelation to show you the purpose, why God created you, how man fall, and how man, and how Christ came to, get, to show us again the way back to where we are supposed to be on the earth. The earth. So the purpose of man is important in your messages. Very, very important. Mm. And how about this gospel of... Um, uh, uh, prosperity, I mean, miracles, healing that uh, preachers are saying and giving people uh, is, is that approach, how is that approach to your approach? Uh, that um, when people get saved the most important thing is to know their purpose in Christ. The prosperity thing, I don't agree with it so much because basically one does not need to get saved to prosper. We oh. have seen people that are not saved and have even prospered more than us. <laughs> Though I know very well that when God blesses you, certainly you will prosper. There's no question about it. God has blessed me, for instance, mm -hmm. uh, uh, and I'm prospering. Mm -hmm. And many people are prospering, not because we were preached the prosperity message, but it's because we were preached Christ. We understood our position, and then God began blessing us. So that is very important. So uh, as we are progressing, tell us about who is Dr. Commander Robert. Dr. Commander Robert is a simple man that came from the village uh, many years ago. <laughs> and he came to Kampala. The, the reason I came to Kampala, there is a, a, a Muslim man I followed. I was a Roman Catholic. I was a Roman Catholic. Mm -hmm. I wanted to become a Catholic priest. Oh. I was an altar boy for over 15 years. An altar boy. <laughs> I was an altar boy mm -hmm. for many years. From all my primary, all my secondary, mm -hmm. I was an altar boy. And so I wanted to become a Catholic priest. But when they denied me because my mother was not married in a holy matrimonial with oh. my father, and she had died. So it was impossible for me to become a Catholic priest. So I felt so bad. Then I inquired from a Muslim man how I could become an imam. <laughs> because I wanted to serve God. <laughs> Any God, as long as we're well, serving it's God. It's God. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I wanted to become an imam. Mm. So the Muslim man picked interest in me and said, you must be a, a Muslim first. I said, I'm ready. How do I become a Muslim? So they circumcised me, and that's how I came to Kampala. 
Mm. That man was living in Kampala. He was a rich man. And so he, he literally made me his son. Yeah, I was circumcised and I, I continued to grow in Islam. And uh, as I was growing in Islam and they were planning to take me to Saudi Arabia to study, to study more, then I got sick. Very, very sick. <laughs> they tried, we tried all hospitals, we tried all things. It failed. He took me to Nairobi Hospital everywhere. He was a rich man. I couldn't heal. Something happened. Uh, they took me to a Muslim, these Muslims who read books. Mm -hmm. And the Muslim man said, there were some demons that were chasing to kill me. So the only way for me to heal was they were going to bury me and then the demons would know that I'm dead. <laughs> and, 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 <laughs> and then they would steal me from the grave. <laughs> That's the word they used. So they buried me. They, they, they buried me. And, and in a coffin? They buried me. They wrapped me in a, in a sackcloth, in a back cloth. And, and, and they buried me uh, 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 some, some place in, 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 in Iganga. And they prepared some women who cried when they were carrying me as a dead body. So <laughs> by the time they took me out of the grave, uh, I was unconscious. I came back to my understanding early in the morning at around 4 a.m. They had buried me at around 6 in the evening. <laughs> so, but I never got healed. So I began to have questions whether I was in the right, whether I was with the right God. Anyway, it became worse. So I had to go back to the village to die. Now, actually, this rich man gave me some money, said, now it's impossible for you to heal. So I went back to the village to die. So it was during that time that I thought about it. I said, but there must be a God who created me. So I began to pray that God, if you ever heal me, I will never do any work, but I will work for you. So that was the promise you were giving yes, God. to God. And God was so faithful. To, to make the story short, I was in that village. To, uh, 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 some two young men came and told me, said, Jesus is going to heal me. And then I accepted Jesus Christ. That is, today is Bishop Kaira. I think you know him from Lugazi. Mm -hmm. That's the guy that was a small boy by then. He preached to me and I got saved. And so when I got saved, the Lord healed me. Uh, and so when the Lord healed me, I automatically began preaching the gospel on the streets. How the old were you? I was about 25, 26. Around mm -hmm. that. Yeah. <laughs> Began preaching so on the God. street, what happened later? And then, I, I, of course, I joined the church. I joined the church. Uh, I joined uh, uh, Eden Revival Church. Uh, I was there for, I think, about three, four years. I was with Bishop Silas in Imbarara. And then we, oh, I don't know why, but we decided to join uh, Eden, to, to join me, uh, Trumpet Center. And then when we joined the Trumpet Center, we, we learned a lot of things as well. And then it was from Trumpet Center that the Lord spoke to me to begin a ministry. And uh, that was in 2000. Wow. 2000, I began ministry. When I began ministry, I thought I'd been called like any other people to begin church. So I began church. Uh, for three years, I was struggling with that church. I was renting a small place, 15,000. But I couldn't even get the, the 15,000 after one month. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then, so it was so hard for me. Then I, I, I went back to God. I said, is it true you called me or I'm struggling with my own things? That was after three years. Mm -hmm. I had only seven members in church for three years. Seven members. Seven members only. So I was wondering whether I had been called. Then that's when the Lord spoke to me audibly. He said, take my church out to win souls. Then I began going out with the seven members that I had. House to house in Kawala, in Makerere. I began to go house to house. But the Lord began to do amazing things. And the Lord began to bless me. Someone would call me and say, the Lord told me to give you a minibus. Do you need it? And indeed we needed it. So things like that. And that's how we, we began in 2004 uh, to go church to church, church by church all over this country, all the districts. I know Uganda from corner to corner, from border to border. 
and then from Uganda we began to go to other countries. When we go to those other countries, like talk about Congo, mm. we, we, we have been in Congo for five years. Five years. I know Congo better than the Congolese. <laughs> <laughs> All the mineral places and forests. <laughs> I don't go for minerals. <laughs> there and there. I go for souls. But uh, Mumbashi, Kinshasa, Kisangani, Bukavu, all those countries, Ikwete, we crossed to Central Africa through Ikwete. So uh, I know the whole of Congo. We're there for five years and we worked with so many churches in all these places. Mm -hmm. uh, the same thing with Zambia, talk about Malawi, uh, talk about Kenya, talk about South Sudan, talk about Ethiopia. Ethiopia, very, very amazing when we went to Ethiopia. Uh, the question was, what language are we going to use? <laughs> <laughs> Those people speak on Amharic. But the Lord gave us wisdom. As I was walking on the street, I found people selling English books on the street. And they said, who is buying these books? These are English books. Then I, I, I saw the Eritrean guy was the one selling the books. Then the Eritrean guy knew English. Then I told him, can he get me about five of them? to come and stay with us. Then about five Eritreans came and began staying with us. Then they began to interpret us. So they were the ones working with us uh, to interpret us. We covered the whole of Ethiopia. Amazing. Yes. And so uh, when COVID came, of course it was a very big challenge to us because we, have to, we had to withdraw all the missionaries that were in different countries and all, so on. It costed us a lot of money we made sure everybody goes back to his country, to his home, something like that. But then after COVID now, I thought of going back because there are 56 countries in Africa. So I thought I was supposed to go back and finish the other countries. But the Lord spoke to me and said, now it was time for the African Missionary Army to go to the other, to the other six continents of the world. So you are launching into the global phase from Africa with a new mandate now of other continents. Yes. Tell us. Yes. And so when the Lord spoke to me that, and I was wondering how I'm going to do it, I said, no, no, this is time for the African missionaries to go to the other continents of the world. Prayerfully, the Lord connected me to a man that I had seen some years back, but we were not in touch. We were not friends even. I got connected me with him, and then I was able to go to America and meet him. He said he agreed to work with me, to connect with me, uh, to receive our missionaries from, from Africa uh, to America. So right now, uh, the whole of November, actually, we, we've been training missionaries for the United States. And we already have the army right now here from different countries in Africa. Uh, it's not only from Uganda. So, though the majority are from Uganda, but we have Congolese, we have Rwandese, we have Tanzanians, we have, uh, 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 we have Malawians. They are part of this team that is going to America, uh, believing God this January. In America, it has been known in the recent year, decades, as the biggest country to send more missionaries in any part of the world more than anyone else. But back in America, the church is also getting down. Yeah. And uh, is that the kind of revival that you want to take back in America? Because we're seeing that the Bible in schools is being uh, put behind the table. And we are seeing issues of uh, uh, human rights yeah. happening. They're mm -hmm. very uh, vi uh, key of, and fundamental. We are seeing issues of abortion yeah. uh, li being legalized. Yeah. We are seeing uh, lots of things are happening in yeah. America. Yeah. Tell us what you're going to do in America. One thing that I'm confident of, America needs God now needs God now. Those Americans are our brothers, and they have really done an amazing work all over the world, missionary work. Even here in Uganda, even here in Africa, they have done an amazing work. But it's so unfortunate that those guys who came and preached to us uh, Christ uh, and living the way of Christ are the same guys now going contrary to what even they taught to us. So I got, I think, a burden for that. I said, we need to go and awaken our brothers. We need to go and revive our brothers. And so 
we are going to win souls. <laughs> we, we, we are not going to plant churches. We, 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 uh, we, we will plant churches if those people want us to plant churches. But we are focusing on winning them back to Christ. Winning them back to uh, Christ. Yes, winning them back to Christ. And already some churches are buttoned with us. They are ready to receive us. They are ready to allow us train their believers so that we, together with their believers, we go out to win others. You took and that is, and that's what we are going to do. We are going to to train their believers yes. and take them out to win souls. And what is the message? Because you will emphasize the, the now, issue of the message. message. The message is very, very key. Because God cannot send you anywhere without a message. We are not carrying the whole Bible. We are carrying the, <laughs> a specific message that yes. the Lord has, has given to us. And we are very, very confident because we have seen this message work here in Uganda. Very effectively. I mean, the pastors who have worked with us, they, they give testimonies on, on the message that we have. People need to know, and I think that is why the church has gone down in, the, in countries like Europe and America, because they received a kind of message which left them hanging without knowing the purpose why God created them. They you have know, the money. They have, they the, have the money. They have everything. So what do they need? Do they need God? They need God because God created us for a purpose. It's not getting money. It's not all these things. And that is why many leaders, church leaders, have come up with money, 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 money. It's like God and money is the same. No, God is above money. So, like I said, purpose. Originally, when God was thinking of man, what was he thinking about? The kind of man, Genesis 126, brings it out more clearer. God said, let us make man. So the man that God intended to be on the earth was going to be made and not created. Made? What's, what's the difference? There is a difference making. between making and creating. This is a very, very big difference. When you read Isaiah 43, God says, Jacob, I created but Israel, I formed. Israel was not created. Israel was made. Jacob was created. God never intended to work with Jacob, but he, he, had, he needed a Jacob as a raw material to, to get Israel whom he would work with. Ah. So the same thing. So God created man and called him Adam with an intention of making him into his image and likeness, the man that he would work with on the earth. I see. So we have this kind of message. Mm. You'd wonder, the, the Bible says, as men as received him, John 1.12, they are given a right to become sons. Ask yourself a question today. Where are the sons of God that have received Christ over the years? Where are they? So if you are not a son, then who are you? Exactly, exactly. You would ask yourself, if you are not a son of God, who are you after receiving Christ, after receiving Jesus Christ? And Romans 8.19 is telling us, all creation is eagerly waiting to see the manifestation of sons. So we are taking a message of sonship. We are taking a message of fatherhood. God is a father. That's what that's what he wants us to know about him. The only way to know God is to know him as a father. If you don't know God as a father, you don't know him. And God is not a father of all creation. He's a God of all creation. But he's not a father of all creation. There's those <laughs> ones who don't belong to him and that those ones who are just there. Create, create, create. God created everything. He's the creator. He's even a God of flesh. But he's not a father of flesh. He's the father of spirits. So he's raising sons. And he's raising them with the purpose of representing him. And that's why we have issues with worship. People don't know, understand what is worship. They claim that God created man for worship. God never created man for worship. Why and that did is God why, create and that man? that is why we have a lot of confusion with worship. 
God created man to represent him. He said, let us make man in our own image, in our own likeness. The purpose of an image is representation. Dominion, authority. After you are an image, oh. then you qualify for dominion. <laughs> <laughs> so he created you, number one, to represent him. The way you represent him is what we call worship. You cannot represent someone whom you don't know. So that is why in, in John chapter 4, Jesus talks to that woman. He says, okay, you are a worshiper. But the problem is you worship the God whom you don't know. Mm. Yes, you worship. But what do you worship? You, you are trying to represent God whom you don't know. So you need to so you, you, know you, you, you are not a true, a true worshiper. Because the true worshippers must have known God as a father before they worship. Then they can represent him. And worship is more than just a, a church singing and dancing. Um, it is the life I live wherever I am. And that, what is that life? Worship. Representing my father. Wherever I stand. When I'm speaking. We must be like Jesus. So if I'm lifting my hands, singing songs, dedicating, you are, that's not you, just enough? You, you, that's not enough. Actually, you, 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 you are trying to manifest who you are. So if you are not a true worshiper, you are just showing a show. It's just a show. Because okay. true mm. worship is a lifestyle mm. that you live. So apart from America, big, why don't we also talk about the Middle East, oh my Asia? We, why don't we, we talk we, about we, China, we, who if, they don't know God if, completely? If, if you go to the uh, to, 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 our, to our to our to our church here, you will see all these pictures, all these maps. We, we we are praying for all those countries, and we are ready to send their missionaries. We are now connecting with those countries uh, because wherever we go, we must be connected. We are we are looking for for coordinators. If you know anyone in Saudi Arabia, please connect us. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm actually having a friend in Dubai, a pastor, who is organizing for me a meeting of, of pastors from the Arab world. And I'm going to meet those pastors and share with them of how we can take missionaries to Saudi Arabia. So you mean uh, the pastors the in countries. the Arab world? Yeah, he's in Dubai. He's in Dubai. He's in Dubai. He's the pastor in Dubai. He's an Arab guy. And, and, and I'm connecting to many other countries. In Greece, we are already connected. Uh, in in, uh, in, uh, in Netherlands, we are connected. We, we, we are moving on. We are moving on. But we are going to begin with America. Okay. Mm. Because America is a superpower. Mm. What it does... Yes, I, I don't know. Uh, like... the, the, the Lord showed me to begin with America. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. That is great. So, when is this starting? January. January. Yeah, this January now. Mm. Yeah. But any, any time I'll invite you to come back to see these guys of fly to, to the United States. But Uganda has, has faced uh, visa restrictions to many people because of uh, uh, the law just signed. That's that. why we have the living God above all those things. We are trusting God and we have seen God do miracles. Yeah. yeah. So, okay. So uh, the, how were you able, let me ask you, to construct buildings and do those these projects? Where do you get money? Like I said, if you serve the living God. I mean, God is the God of everything. So God has really blessed us. He has opened doors for us. People, uh, people like you now, you are seeing this wonderful good job. You'll be able to support us. People are supporting us from different corners of the world because they are seeing the good work that is, is, is going on. And they know that is the hand of God that is supporting us. So it's God that has supported us to this work. Okay, so tell us about it. From you have a family. I have a very beautiful wife called Christine, and uh, uh, four biological children. Okay. And then we have also other spiritual signs. Mm. Mm -hmm. That is great. Uh, recently, you organized an ordination of one thousand four hundred. Yeah, uh, uh, in May, in May last year, now uh, we organized the first ever uh, uh, ordination because this ordination was for international missions. The Lord spoke to me and said, this is another assignment that now is going to another area. 
you know, Jesus said, go preach the gospel to the ends of the earth. So it's like we are going to the ends of the earth. So people need to be ordained specifically for this assignment. So the Lord spoke to me to ordain ministers for international missions. The ordination was here, I think, in May, and we were able to ordain over 1,400 ministers. And we are going to be ordaining people again in May this year. Yeah, because many people are yearning to do international missions. But it's better if you go when you are ordained. And I remember in the book of uh, Acts chapter 13, where, where, where when they were worshipping and praying, and the Holy Spirit said, separate for me Barnabas and Paul. Not because they had not been ministers, but now that they were going for to, to another uh, area. So we need to ordain them. Okay. So viewers, we are still with Dr. Kamanda Robert the lead pastor of a main commission church. Yeah. And uh, we are trying to see the deployment of not troops now, but missionaries in other parts of the world. So God has called him into this important mission where he is sending uh, ministers who are going to change the world. He's saying it's not about starting churches, but preaching to these individuals and that the message is very, very key. Um, Pastor, what do you talk about the current, uh, uh, back to the message, there's so many doctrines yeah. that are, 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 that, are in doc- that are taking on in yeah. our country. People yeah, saying yeah. that uh, if I'm uh, a believer from this pastor, yeah. I don't go to this pastor. Some like are that. accusing yeah. each other. They're yeah. fighting yeah. one yeah. another. Uh, so tell us. Number one, mm. it's, a, it's a sign of immaturity. Mm. It's really a sign of immaturity. Uh, according to the Bible, the fivefold ministry was given to the church to equip the saints so that they can know their oneness in Christ. Because in Christ we must be one. And so immaturity is causing all those wars when people are children, when, 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 when you have babies, that's what you expect. But, but, but again, um, um, uh, we lack the order of God, which also we are trying to build. The father-son order. The father-son order is very, very key. We have people who just move from church to church, but they have no connection of a father, a spiritual father. I'm talking of a spiritual father. Mm. Yes. So they run up and down, and they eat any kind of doctrine they find. They are not guided. And so they bring confusion. And sometimes they end up beginning churches. I can imagine... If someone is not a son anywhere and he's trying to be a father, you can't be a father if you have never been a son. So you expect him also to raise more orphans. So we have a church full of orphans. These are people that are running up and down and end up creating their own doctrines. And some are in ministry, not for Jesus, but for money. Mm. But for money. And it's a big challenge. So uh, uh, this is to warn believers. If you have accepted Christ, Grow in Christ. And Christ is the word. Go back to the Bible. Understand what, why you got saved. And live a life of salvation. Know what you became. You became a son of God. Grow as a son of God. Get connected uh, from the spirit. You know, spiritual fathers, you, you don't just pick a spiritual father. You prayerfully discover who your oh. spiritual father is. Prayerfully. But if you are just running up and down, you know, with the, with the, with the money gospel, uh, uh, the gospel of things, the gospel of things is not from God. <laughs> we need the gospel of Christ, not the gospel of things, the gospel of money. That is from, the, the, uh, from Satan. So the orphaned <laughs> pastors yes, yes. are a problem. Are a problem. Yeah, they're no. not guided. Nobody can touch no. them. So should we allow government to regulate uh, such, uh, uh, to regulate churches, or you also believe no. that... The, the um, 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 I belong to the National Fellowship of Born Again Pentecostal Churches. It's a fellowship of pastors all over this country, Uganda. And it's a very good way of, of regulating the church and putting it in order. 
and uh, I, I happen to be one of the ministers in the National Fellowship of Born Again Pentecostal Churches, I had evangelism and discipleship. And I'm sure we are trying to do that to make sure that people get to understand the kind of doctrine that should be taught. Mm. Yeah. So uh, um, uh, we, are, we are doing something. I don't think we should throw it to the government. Okay. <laughs> no, no, no. We are, we have, <laughs> so the government should stay away from, <laughs> <laughs> should stay away from us. Uh, we, we, we are ready to, to organize ourselves. How about other our leadership? Uh, other fellowships. Other fellowships. I have no problem with other fellowships, but mm -hmm. we should all work together because we are just a body of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. We should work together. So, Doctor, um, tell us uh, about 2024 uh, for, for this country, for Africa. What are you expecting to see? Praise be the Lord. I expect to see change and transformation. These two, th two words are very important. If, because you can't remain the way you are and expect to change anything. You've got to think of changing and transforming to become better in everything that we are doing. Wherever you are, in every sector, or, or, or in every field where you are, begin to change and do better. Do, do you believe in the church working closely with government to implement uh, several uh, several things in the country? I have done that myself. I make sure that I'm working with the government. Like the like what the president is, is giving us money, he's giving people money to, to, to do small businesses. So when people get saved, um, and I have organized different groups uh, to get that money, for, from the government, mm -hmm. when they are already faithful, we teach them faithfulness, and then they can they can progress and, and and yeah, it's very very important that the church has to work together with the government. If you get government money, will you be able to talk about uh, the evil that some government people are doing? <laughs> if I if I if I know them, if I know them, <laughs> I know there is a lot of corruption, mm -hmm. but uh, I can't point at at anybody's finger because I'm not in that area. I I, I have no evidence. <laughs> but I hear about it. I see, I, I see it on news, I hear it on radio, uh, mm. but I have no evidence. But I think the government is concerned about mm. that. Mm. So, uh, as we, we wind up, what else would you want to tell the world? Um, God is needed in the world because he's the one who created it. <laughs> we can't live without God. And God sent his son, Jesus Christ. But we need to know why he had to send the son, Jesus Christ. So please, the whole world, wherever you are, you need God. Because God is the one who created you. He's the one who created everything you see and everything you don't see. So we need him if we are going to live accurately in his position. In, 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 in his, if we are going to live accurately on this earth, we need God. Thank you so much. This has been the Senior Citizens Talk from HICGI News Agency. We've had a very profound uh, message of deploying an army for God to the rest of the world of missionaries, Dr. Commander Robert. Until again next time, my name is Chivumbi. Ernest Benjamin on the camera is Wagodo Agre. Happy New Year.